All right, this is the Bible Ranger here. We're going to talk about health and wellness, part two, episode 11. Why do we get sick and helping the body to heal itself? Now, I'm not a doctor. I need to say this to you. Um, I just passed down the information from people, some doctors and medical practitioners that want to let the body heal the natural way. So please consult your doctor if you want to try any of these things here. Okay, how do we get sick? Let me name a few. Your pH is not balanced. Living in dehydration, not drinking enough, basically, water. Through an infection or the aging process. What you're eating, your diet, your lifestyle, your genetics. And I want to add something to this here. Um, there's something called epigenetics, which is basically, I heard this um, person of, of medicine say that you know, the genetics that you have between your families loads the weapon, but your lifestyle and what you eat actually is the trigger. So don't let it be just because genetics, because my parents had it, I'm going to have it. It doesn't have to be like that. Environmental toxins, what's around you basically or where you work. Um, but I believe there's one bigger fact than all the other ones, and it's called stress. All right, stresses in life. Emotional and mental manifestations. As an example, you're worrying about these world events, the civil unrest, like these things going on today, COVID-19, wearing that mask, people at work, unemployed, family problems. You'll notice that the amount of watching negative news will be proportioned to the amount of your stress level. So just cutting the news alone is going to really help you out. Now, stress can make you sick cause depression, cause you to lose your job, your family, hardship, or even suicide. Please don't ever think of suicide. Of course, when things are down and out, Satan is going to do his best to try, to try to get you out. So don't ever think that no matter how tough this life is going to be in this world, things will get better. Let's reduce it. Get a full night's sleep or take a nap if you're good at that. Get a massage. Breathe deeply. And it, it, this increases the oxygen that goes into your cells and is actually very healthy for you. Listen to calming music. Praying and meditating. And, and what I mean by that, you're thinking about what God's word says, how he wants you to act. Um, give your worries to the Lord because he cares for you. Exercise and walk. Not everybody can jog. But most people can walk. Just walking alone is very healthy. You know, and, and you might not necessarily want to walk through traffic. You might want to walk through the woods or some place where it's just more, it's more stressless. Laugh. Laugh as much as you possibly can. I mean, listen to some good, clean comedy. A praise and worship. Um, get into God's word and his promises. And be thankful and just practice thankfulness. Sex with your spouse. I mean, there's actually so many studies about how it helps you live longer. Get a pet, get a hobby, a hobby that relaxes you, or knitting, woodworking, something that you find that is actually enjoyable. Socializing, do the best you can with this one. Drink good green tea. All right. Medicine today versus self-healing. Now, with today's medicine, um, they basically diagnose and they, they do disease management. And they put you on some kind of regimen of a pill or some kind of medication. And many times they're just managing it so it won't get any worse. And many times you're there taking medicine for the rest of your life. Now, when it talks about healing, you're removing whatever obstacles are in, your, are in the way of your body's natural tendencies to repair itself. But God has made this body incredibly well. But when it's got too many obstacles, it's got too many battles to fight, it can't heal like it's supposed to. For example, you don't think about, or you don't have to worry about once you get a cut, um, it heals itself. Or you break a bone and it's reset and it's in a cast so it won't move or, or break again, but the body is the one that's healing it. So the body can heal incredibly well. Let's talk about pH balance. 
Now, pH has a range between 0 and 14. 0 being like a battery acid here, and 14 will be something close to like Drano, like a, a drain cleaner. However, when I looked up Drano, it was only 11. But something like Drano, it would be a, a total alkaline. Now, the stomach is actually about a 1. That's incredible, super powerful. Some people have a 2 or a 3 because they're having maybe some issues. But if you think about it, look at 2. Lemon juice is about a 2, and then vinegar is about a 3. So, so you, you know that's a huge range. I mean, you can digest anything with your stomach pretty much, but you can't digest everything with lemon. Water now is in the middle. It's a 7. Now, the kidney and the lungs they maintain the pH balance of the body, and the body functions on 7.35 to 7.45. So it's a little bit more alkaline. That's what you want it there. That promotes healing, by the way. Dr. Daryl Wolf says that the acidic or the acidicness of the body pH is one of the major causes of disease or acidosis coming from acid. If the body is too acidic, it can cause osteoporosis issues because this is the way it works. If it's too acidic, it's looking to balance itself out. You have in your body, everybody has minerals in their bodies, and the biggest source of minerals is the bones. So if it's too acidic, it wants to pull the minerals out of your bones, and now your bones are weak, giving you osteoporosis issues. Now, terminal cancer patients, when they test their urine, and they test their saliva, um, they range almost all of them. There's always exceptions, but almost all of them come somewhere in the range of 4.0 to 5.5, which is extremely acidic. Don't forget, these numbers are exponential. They don't add, they multiply. It's kind of like the Richter scale. It's a huge difference between a 5 earthquake and a 6 earthquake. Huge difference. Same thing with this scale here, pH scale. But the pH's major cause, what makes it acidic, it makes it get really low is this, and this is going to be, prepare yourself, it's going to be a little disgusting. It's going to be something called putrefaction. I'm not saying the word 100% right, but what that is, is fecal waste reabsorption, reabsorbed into your body, into your system. Because, and I try to give you a real picture, th these are pipes here, these are pipes, but I try to get you a real picture of the intestines and it was utterly disgusting. I couldn't even do it. But your intestines, your large intestines would look something like this when you haven't done a cleanse for a long time or years or months, I'm not sure exactly. But you want it more like this, okay? And what happens is this throws out toxins into your body and your body reabsorbs it. Now think about this. When it starts to reabsorb its own toxins, it's actually called toxemia, which means dirty blood. And, and how can you heal yourself? How can the body heal itself when it's fighting all these poisons? So it's got to say, where am I needed the most? Wow, I'm being poisoned. Let me go take care of this poison here. So that's where it goes. And, and other things that wouldn't normally bother you starts, starts to come out of you. And that was according to Dr. Darrell Wolf. Now he says this also, that the average person, this man as an example, carries 10 pounds of fecal matter that is putrefied, they're rotting, okay? And you don't have to have a belly. You know, he probably has way more than 10 pounds of it, okay? So, so when a person has poor diet, poor digestion, um, sluggish colon, which is a large intestines, uh, it reduces the function of the liver and the kidney, and it leads to toxicity in the body and a lack of oxygen at a cellular level. So your, your cells need oxygen to survive and to fight other other things if it doesn't have it it starts getting sick now it leads to more problems now basically low oxygen like in this picture here this is your blood cell low oxygen leads to more problems and when your immune system is suppressed is low it can't protect itself efficiently like it's supposed to now you have bacteria and you have viruses and now you have um, fungus and you have parasites wait till we get to that subject <laughs> Um, are allowed to propagate or breed inside of you, and you end up getting sick. Now, of course, it's causing this dirty blood, and we talked about toxemia. 
causing the cells to die or change into even cancer cells. All right, your body is crying out for help. First, you get a toxic colon. Then you end up with toxic blood and toxic liver and toxic kidneys and, and, and toxic bladder. And then you have um, the, lip, the lymphatic system starts to have problems too. This is a domino effect that happens to the body. It's difficult for your body to heal when you're having all these problems. Your body gives you signs as a, as a cry for help. It's saying, hey, I'm talking to you. Look at these problems I'm having. And you know what we do? Nothing. Or we'll go to the doctor, you know, because of you're having, you think it's a particular issue. For example, these are minor issues that you're having some type of problem. You have bad breath. And I'm not talking about when you first wake up, but throughout the day, you have body odor. Yeah, it's not normal to have body odor, believe it or not. Think about this. You know, you put on deodorant or we put on deodorant so you won't smell the rest of the day. However, how many three-year-olds that play around all day you ever smell them? And they don't smell that much. We smell like in 20 minutes. They can run for hours and hours and smell very little. And or you go into the restroom and you you smell more than normal. And you kind of embarrass using other people's bathrooms. Now you can have intermediate problems because you're not. Is the problem is going on more years and you're not taking care of it? You can have systemic uh, candida and basically is a it's a bad ratio between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. You need both, but you have to have a good ratio. If, if you let problems persist, you, you end up with gout, arthritis, sinus problems, skin disorder, headaches, and then, or chronic fatigue. You're always tired because these things are going out in your body, are going on. Now you end up with major issues like heart disease and cancer and stroke and diabetes. Now you're having a bigger problem here. But you can overcome these. For example, if you had a, how would you fix a car that had a problem? You know, if you had a car with sluggish oil, what would you do? Right, very simple. You drain it, you change the oil, you change the oil filter. Now, with the car, you can only go for so far. If it co the damage is caused, the car doesn't repair itself. You have to put actually new parts or something. But the body heals itself if the right circumstances or the obstacles are removed. That's incredible. All right, help your body heal itself. It needs your help. It's overloaded. The liver is working overtime until it becomes chronically fatigued. And it's like, you know, what's, what's the use? I try, I try, I try, and I can't do all this work. And then it's, it, 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 things go through it that are not supposed to go through it. It's not filtering like it's supposed to. And here comes the side effects. You go to the doctor and he tells you, don't worry. These are signs of aging. You can accept that and take your pills for life, or let's clean up this mess, literally. It's called detoxifying. All right, there's an order though. And the order is, these are, these are recommendations by many health practitioners and medical doctors. This is what they say. This is the order that they would like you to use the most. All right, by the way, these presentations, some of these pictures, you might want to stop these things or look at them over again because some of these pictures are pretty incredible. I don't know if this is, there's a huge difference between these two intestines. That's incredible. But I hope you get that result. You need to do a colon cleanse first because that's where the infections and the poisoning is coming out of the, the poisoning. And once you get all that poison out of your body, then you can do other things. You can actually attack the parasites parasites they they're taking away your nutrition so so not only are you being poisoned but now you have no nutrition you got to take care of them next you have you do a, a kidney cleanse number four you do a liver slash gallbladder cleanse and number five you do a blood cleanse all right consult your doctor i'm not a doctor i'm just giving to you information that i read from doctors and from medical practitioners people that care about your health the natural way um those steps before these these those five steps i'm going to cover cover them in detail in the next video i didn't want this video to be very long 
prepare yourself mentally while the next video comes on. You know, educate yourself in what you need to educate yourself on. And the best time to start this will probably be Saturday morning because by the time the weekend is over, most of your system has been cleansed already, okay? Because you're going to need a restroom and you're going to be, you're going to need it close to you. You're going to go there frequently. You might get something called detox flu or a healing crisis. And basically you feel worse during the event and after the cleanse. But that's not everybody, that's a few people, but it can definitely happen. Keep that in mind. Also, the accumulation of toxic material must be processed to be removed from your body. And in doing so, this is where the detox flu comes from and the, and the healing crisis. There's a lot of stuff being removed from you and your body kind of goes into shock a little bit. All right, don't get discouraged. It'll be over in a few days and, and you're going to feel a lot better. Most people will feel a lot better. All right, now why do we really get sick? This is really important. In Romans 5.12, and please read all the way through 15, but I only put one verse here. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death pass upon men, for all have sinned. And this is the major sickness right here, that you know everything was perfect, Adam and Eve sinned, and now we die, and we get sick. And you know, even... If you follow all the processes of being healthy and you get to live to 120 years old, eventually you're gonna die. Whether you're a full vegetarian, a meat eater, it doesn't matter, you're going to die. And we are gonna be accountable to the Lord. So, while God has given us a free, free gift, please repent and receive his gift. Just in a prayer, just you don't have to be fancy, just say, Lord, I repent, Lord, I receive you and just live for him. That's all, start reading the Bible. Start in the book of John. So, if um, this information has been valuable, please subscribe, thumbs up, and please pass the word. A lot of people will need this. Most people have some type of sickness or some kind of um, issue they need to fix. Please pass the word. And this is the Bible Ranger, um, keeping the Bible simple, but yet rich in content. Thank you very much.